Hello and once again welcome back. It's another SSD speed test for today. We are looking at the XLR8 gaming SSD, the CS3040, an NVMe that I would say is on the cusp of working. It's one of these SSDs, this is the 500 gig model that has reported sequential read of 5,600 and sequential write of 2,600. Now, you may be able to hear a humming noise there in the background, I'm still recording these from home, and that's because one of today's games is going to be a disc-based game. It's gonna be very important that you understand that because I think a lot of you were asking if the benefits of SSDs for a lot of the games we're testing, if them being on a disc would make any difference. So for now, let's go ahead and format our SSD. Let's see what the reported benchmark of our XLR8 SSD is. And we have a reported 5,636. Now, that is literally tippy-toeing over the minimum threshold there. But given that the SSD has reported 5,600 megabytes per second sequential read, that's pretty respectable. It still manages to ever so slightly exceed what it considers to be the bare minimum, but at the same time, it's still only a little bit outside of the recommended minimum. I'm still not sure how I feel about that now. I'm sure this will run absolutely fine, but if you are watching this video after the beta from PlayStation has ended and the full release of that software is out there, do double check what the recommended minimums are. Let's make our way into the user interface of PlayStation. Again, I know I've done a lot of these videos recently. It's just because a lot of people are finding themselves in this area where they've got to start buying SSD upgrades for their PlayStation, even now, tentatively, ahead of any shortages or later on when the beat is in full. I think a lot of people are having to learn a lot of new things about sequential read, about NAND, about PCIe, the difference between PCIe in different speed groups, Ultimately, it's a big, big subject. So yes, I know I'm doing a lot of content on these on the subject of PS5 and SSDs, but it's general storage. I cover all storage, and I want to make sure that this particular area of storage is as palatable and easy to understand for gamers and maybe even some parents out there as well. So the games we're going to be testing today are Doom Eternal, Control, Playtale Innocence, and Wreckfest. We've dropped Man Eater from the lineup. Again, it's mainly because in my previous test I felt like the save spot was a little bit out of whack, so I left that. If we do need another test, I'm going to include Destruction All Stars, but to be honest, Destruction All Stars has a lengthy startup sequence, which I think has made things a little tougher to inter kind of compare between them. Don't forget, later this week we are going to be bench testing Demon Souls Rift Apart and Spider-Man Miles Morales in our SSD head to head so do stay tuned for that but again all of these games including doom eternal if we go down you can see it is on the console storage there on the bottom right of the screen and as you can see in the icon on the screen it is the ps5 upgrade of it and again we will be moving both the game data from the base level game console storage there and we will be moving the ps5 eternal upgrade there so don't worry all the data will be on the ssd and a lot of you are probably highlighting the fact that the disc icon there, the game's running on the disc, it's not running from the disc. The entire contents of that disc have been ported over to the system, with that disc only being utilised as a checksum system. There's a full option to completely download that out from the disc, which I've done, so it being on a disc is not going to be a factor. If we go into the settings menu along here, we can see the console storage there. And I don't actually have a lot of games on this system, by the way, and I'll show you in a moment. But look how full the console storage is. It's kind of the whole necessity of these M2 NVMEs. And there is our PMY CS3040 SSD right there, ready to rock. So let's have a look there. We'll come out of that. So the first thing we want to do is start moving some of these games over. So let's go ahead and begin the moving process. So again, we're going to be move, moving, uh, let's add those extra games anyway, but we're not going to bother with Destiny this time. So let's go down to the bottom. We're going to move both sets of Eternal Data. So there's Eternal Data 1, Eternal Data 2. And then from there, we're going to move Wreckfest, Control. Why not? Let's move Destruction All Stars as well, just to be on the safe side, but we're dropping Man Eater there. So there is our data, 214 gigabytes of data being moved over. As I say, not a lot of games on there. So let's go ahead and move that data now. And let the transfer take place. 
So, as mentioned in my other videos, when we do the SSD face-off, we've been running through all of these different videos, and this is really something to tell you guys about for the later series later this week. Um, I was trying to debate whether I'm going to do videos of all of the SSDs against each other, so that would be the SN850, the Sabrant Rocket 4 Plus, the Fire Cuda 530, and the Samsung 980 Pro. They're the main four SSDs, but there are still other SSDs, like the Aurorus and this one, the PNY here. So should I run a whole system where it's all six SSDs against each other? Should I do two versus two versus two and then winners against each other in a three? Or should I do three versus three and then the winner of both of those against each other? If you are watching this, and you've got an interest about that, how that should be presented, do let me know. I'm in the process of recording all of the bench tests for all of those games on all of those SSDs, but it's how I'm going to present it to you that I haven't decided yet. The edit process is going to be in a day or two while I work on some other projects. But what's your thoughts? How do you guys think I should present these videos? Should I present them two versus two versus two versus two? Should I present them three versus three and then a final should I do it all together in one giant video? Think of the length of the video, because we are talking about one video that would likely be about 30 to maybe even 40 minutes long. So if you think that's too much, it's better to break it down in individual ones, do let me know. But anyway, on with this video. So if this is your first time watching my speed transfer tests, then you may be wondering, why is this taking so long? These are meant to be super fast SSDs, and the console has got a super fast internal SSD. Why is this not any quicker? Well, this is because I can only ascertain that as data is being moved between these systems, uh, between the internal SSD and the M2 SSD, in the middle there is some kind of encryption or compression or some kind of security checks or closing or opening of a security gate. It's either an anti-priority measure it's a verification check constantly being done on individual blitz or blocks of data. I'm not sure, but it is certainly presenting a bottleneck and it makes demonstrating write performance on these SSDs within the PS5 system incredibly difficult. Right, so the transfer has completed and we can have a little look there, scroll on down and as we can see, M2 SSD storage there on the bottom right. We can go through all of them right the way down to the bottom, M2 SSD. All of them are stored on the M2. Indeed, if we make our way back into the settings menu right there, go into the storage, bang, there we go, M2 SSD storage. We freed up the storage on the con console area. I think that's largely done what it's supposed to do, but I think for now, why don't we just crack on and start playing some of these games. Again, as my other videos have gone, what we do is we play a game and then in the background, we have both games running side by side with the timer on screen. So let's go with Control as our first game there. Actually, I've just done that a little bit too early doors. Sorry about that guys, fluffed up the beginning there of control. I want to make sure these are as tight as possible. So I'm going to redo it now. Sorry for the edit there mid video. But for now, let's go straight into control. Three, two, one. And we're going through basic loading there. And we're into the game or at the loading screen. Hopefully you guys can see that on screen. I can't see how this compares with the other game there in the background. But it felt pretty tight, it felt pretty, you know, pretty on the money there. I think we're good. So again, we can just do the same thing we've done before. We're just running through. And I think for now, that's pretty much a good indication there. I think the timing there felt very, very similar indeed. If there is a difference, I didn't really feel it, so it couldn't have been that much. But for now, let's now make our way into game number two. Uh, game number two, we're going to go with Wreckfest. I'm going to start it off same as before, so we're going to get ready. Three, oh, so we're going to go straight into the main menu for our breakfast. We don't kick these off directly from the loading screen because this game has loads of titles here that are an absolute pain. So what we do is we wait until we get to the title screen before we compare these two here. So we go through that there, and then we're going to go ahead and kickstart that in just a moment. So here we are on the title screen. We're going to get ready to start. Three, two, one, go. I want the weird grassy field bit as well. I think both of these, again, there's that weird 50% pause 
that this game does. I never quite understood that, why it needs to do that. It's almost as if the game isn't optimised anywhere near enough as it needs to be for this process. But here we are, we're on the game and we are in it. So again, that's another game that didn't, that felt, I might argue, the tiniest bit slower. Maybe I'm wrong, it just felt like it was a tiny bit off that time. Maybe I'll be proved or disproved there in the description or when we're looking at the two running side by side. But for now, I think that's good enough for testing these two games here. So let's make our way back into the PlayStation menu. Cancel that game there. Next is going to be Plague. Another game that we run from the title screen. <clears throat> Sorry, getting a bit hoarse from all these videos recently. Um, so again, we don't really test this game from these menus because we can't skip these publisher logos. We're trying to err towards games that either have no online capability or games that don't have a delay. That's why we drop Destiny after the first few videos. And again, I will be bench testing those much faster and more heavy duty games later on in the direct comparisons because we need to have a way to directly compare all these games over uh, these SSDs over a myriad of games. But for now, let's load the save spot. Load that one there. And it's from this point that we're going to compare these two games. So now we've got them on screen there. Let's get them compared. Three, two, one, go. And we're making our way in. There's that really nice light mad rat opening there. Um, this is a game that I, I think loads surprisingly well, given the depth and the size of the game inside. But again... We're in the game just like we were before. We've got that big old forest area, all kinds of lush, I say lush verdant stuff. It's actually quite grimy. Um, but again, the game load nice and quick for us there. There's the old hidden loading screen as we've seen before there. Um, can't really jump from that. But again, that's pretty good for me. I'm quite impressed with that one. I'm satisfied. So I think for now, what we can do is go back onto the main menu and from there, we'll test our final game, which is going to be Doom Eternal. So once again, this is the PS5 version. There you can see the icon. We're not running the PS4 version, but it is using the PS4 base data with the large, um, I think it was pretty big, I think it was like 78 year gig um, of extra data there. It was absolutely massive. And of course, now it's, it's oh, 72 gig. It has moved all of that data onto the PlayStation and um, from there, we moved that onto the NVMe SSD uh, for this. And although it is disc-based, it's not going to be utilizing the data from the disc. We've already copied that. It's more, it's just a security check. So we can make our way into Doom. And again, lots of titles here that aren't skippable. We're going to do this directly from the main game select screen where we compare these two games. So we're going to go into it there. We're not going to include all this stuff because it's logging into Bethesda Net. So that introduces a bunch of internet um, kind of variables that might uh, invalidate our tests between them. This is where we're going to compare it from. And again, we're right at the start of the game. Super annoying, by the way. I don't know if you guys know this. If you have a Doom 5 completed save, which I do, you can't carry that over to the PS5 version. Livid. Anyway, let's compare these two. Three, two, one, go. Let's go there. Ridiculously fast loading time. I don't know if you guys saw this before. I'm using ray tracing enabled. I'm not utilizing uh, the 120 frames just because I'm going to be utilizing uh, capture recording software. So I thought even with that, there wasn't much point running that because we wouldn't really know the difference in this recording. It wouldn't tax things too much because that's mainly about the core system. But again, game seemingly to me runs absolutely fine. I'm quite cool with that. I think at the moment we're running the game exactly how we wanted it to be run. And for now, I think I would call that a success, ladies and gentlemen. And yes, I'm using a shotgun from way, way, way too further distance. But I think for now, we've got that. I think that game's going to be good. We can exit out of there. And I know I said it was the last game, but you know what? Just for the hell of it, let's include Destruction All Stars anyway. I said I wasn't going to, but... To be perfectly honest, there's no harm in including it as well. We might as well chuck in all the tests that we can for this SSD. Because at the moment, I think it's running pretty, pretty well. Given it's probably one of the lowest performing uh, PCIe NVMe SSDs that we've tested thus far at 50, uh, 5,600 megabytes per second. And I think this is holding itself up pretty well, to be honest. Um, but for now, we're going to skip past all this nonsense here. 
and we're going to compare these games together here on this screen. So three, two, one, go. And we're making our way in again, as mentioned in the other videos, this game has like a, a hidden loading here happening on screen with pre-created assets. So again, lots of the arena is getting built in real time around us. So where you notice the difference between SSD and console running of this in my other videos, it's how long these individual sequences last for. And we notice the difference between those sequences quite early doors of how quickly the system would acknowledge uh, that the next stage in the loading process was uh, taken care of. But again, this feels pretty normal. The reason I didn't include this game in the test anymore is I felt like it wasn't the greatest example. Um, but for now, we can go ahead and I think that's good enough for me. So what we're going to do now is move these games back over to the console. And then from there, we're going to summarize what we've seen today. So let's go in into the game. Let's transfer those back over and we're going to move all of those down there it's going to tell us we're just going to move exactly the same games as last time there we are all of the ones from the ssd we're going to move them back uh, why do we do this on camera well because this is another way of showing you guys about that bottleneck that i mentioned before between the internal ssd and the m2 ssd because unlike before when we were reading from the internal ssd and write um, and writing to the M2 SSD, that PNY XLR8. This time we are reading from that SSD and writing to the internal PlayStation storage. So very, very interesting there that that bottleneck is very much present. And I use the word bottleneck negatively. There's definitely something in the system that's being done um, with regard to the compression or the encryption of that data. And I include the moving back of this data at the end of the videos just to show you guys how that backs up my theory there. But overall, I'm quite pleased with this SSD. Of all the SSDs that I've tested, although I like it, I would say this is one of those ones that I would maybe err uh, on the fence of right now. Not because I think it's a bad SSD. I do not think the XLR8 is a bad SSD. Remember, this is the CS3040. What I'm saying is, because the PlayStation update is in beta, and I think a lot of people should really think about that beta in a lot more detail anyway what's more important about this is they might change the compatibility listing and those minimum requirements closer to full release and because this ssd is so close to the benchmark there and so close to the recommended minimum that i do think that this is a disc that might fall off the edge of that compatibility very early but nevertheless this has been my performance benchmark on the ps5 of the XLR8 Gaming SSD. Do click like if you've enjoyed the video. It helps me understand what you guys like. This might be, we've got one or two more speed tests to go before we go down into the massive comparisons of all of these SSDs and the coming days and weeks. Do let me know what you think is the best way to display those, two versus two versus two, etc. All in one giant showdown, 30, 40 minute video, or lots of small subgroups of threes and fours. Do let me know, otherwise, Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Use the links in the description to learn about some of the products today. And of course, use the free advice section over at NAS Compares for free data storage advice. And otherwise, I shall see you next time.